What if I told you your job might not exist in five years? Well, my job might not exist in two or three years. And honestly, it's a little bit scary. And uh, it kind of sounds like sci-fi, but last night I woke up in the middle of the night. That's the thing that I do. I woke up and I started worrying. Like, I love this thing so much. I love my studio. I love being in front of the camera. I love making videos. But the reality is AI is moving so fast. My husband and I were just talking like 10 years ago. We had this advantage like, oh, we're building a website for our company. This is our advantage for the next few years. And like, if you had a great website, it really set you apart from competition. And then social media, if you had social media, you had more sales. Now, like you're using AI, it probably gives you like a week of advantage. And then everybody starts using the same AI and you have to find something else. So it's already happening. Jobs are being replaced and it's because of AI. By 2030, 85 million jobs could disappear due to automation. But here's the real twist. 78% of companies already use AI and 92% plan to double down by 2026. But this video is not to scare you. This video is to help you stay positive about the future. And today I'll show you seven AI skills that can earn you from 100 to 300 per hour right now. And you don't need a tech degree. And in today's world, you need a few weeks of learning and then you're good. You need to learn what kind of AI tools people are using in your industry, how they're using them. This video is about that. And watch till the end because the last skill is the real game changer and it's something I'm already teaching my kids. They have five and three. I don't really know what kind of world they be living in, but I know that this skill is gonna outlast them longer. <laughs> in today's world. Oh my God, it's crazy. But let's stay positive and let's start. So skill number one is called precision prompting. And it's so funny to me when people tell me, oh, chat GPT is really bad at creating scripts. Come on, it's just the wrong prompting. Using AI, it's not really about what you're using. It's asking the right questions. And when we do research for our guests and if we do it using perplexity, for example, it doesn't look like, oh, come up with questions for this person. It's a lot of back and forth. So for example, you don't just tell ChatGPT to write a LinkedIn post. Instead, you're like, give me five LinkedIn post ideas for CTOs at mid-sized companies about cutting cloud costs with AI Keep it expert, no fluff. Start with something that's gonna make people excited, but maybe give them a little FOMO, etc. And honestly, guys, right now we're looking for a copywriter like that. I don't really need someone who writes amazing texts, who has perfect English grammar. That's someone we needed five years ago. Today, we need someone who's very good at prompting, knows what tool to use, and there are cool tools for LinkedIn, for example, called AZGen.io. You can use Claude, you can use Poppy AI. There are so many cool tools that allow you to write that kind of copy without much prompting, uh, and they let you connect posts that you actually liked from before, uh, some viral posts. So there are tools that are there already. And we're looking at the freelance landscape and we're seeing people get $80 per hour like that. And $80 per hour doesn't mean they write um, half of a LinkedIn post in an hour. They're writing a lot of posts in that hour, four to five. Some people make $200 an hour just because of the amount of work, amount of quality work they're able to produce in that hour with little experience, but with a lot of information on how to use these AI tools. And if you want even better results from ChatGPT, tell it to act like someone who's been a journalist for 20 years, they've received a lot of awards, all of their articles go viral. And something that Sergey Brin said uh, a couple of days ago at Google I.O., he said, you need to threaten AI. And it tends to perform better when you threaten it. So sometimes when AI gives me a really bad result, I'm like, come on, my sales depend on you. You're acting like a fool. This is a really weak thing to do. This is a really weak post. I don't like it. And it really performs better. And Sergey confirms that. But the thing is, the art here is in prompting. The art here is giving the right mindset <laughs> to your AI and uh, have it analyze the data, generate solutions, give it some incentives. Like my thread, my thread, and I don't like it, but saying that their performance defines your performance and your outcome. So it used to take a copywriter eight hours, now it takes just 45 minutes. So with AI tools, you're able to create a week worth of content in just an hour. The next very important skill, and I tell everyone on my team who's creating content, guys, please learn how to trend scout. In today's world, catching up on trends is so outdated. You need to predict what's going next. You need to catch viral products before everyone else. AI now scans TikTok, Amazon, and Google Trends for you, 
picking up early spikes like AR smart mirrors or this new video generation app or another cool thing that's on the rise. And that should be very niche specific. For example, my COO has to stay on top of everything we do. And uh, she subscribed to 30 to 50 creator economy newsletters and she receives all that information. Of course, she's not reading through all of that. She just uploads everything to her chat GPT and asks it, to identify trends, like what's happening in the industry. What should we be doing if we want to stay ahead? Like, again, with the information that AI collects for you or you're receiving, you need to be able to ask the right questions. And this way you're able to be a trendsetter. People still pay 50 to $100 for a quick trend report and 300 to $500 for in-depth analysis and up to $1,000 for exclusive ideas. But again, it's not just because you read something on ChatGPT, it's because you dig deeper, you ask the right questions, and you came up with the right ideas for your client. But here's the thing, in the AI era, spotting trends is just the first step. The real value comes from how you present those insights and they have to be very client oriented. That's where Gamma comes in. And uh, this is the app that we're using to present us as a media company, as Silicon Valley girl to our partners. So I've tested dozens of tools, but Gamma app is the one I keep coming back to, especially after their latest relaunch. It's no longer just for presentations, though I started using it for presentations, I'm still using them for presentations, but now Gamma lets you create everything from landing pages to full-blown reports and social media content, all powered by AI. Here's what I love. Imagine you've just uncovered the next big trend. With Gamma, you can turn that raw data into a stunning shareable report or a pitch ready deck in minutes. No design skills, no endless formatting, just results. I've used Gamma to build quick one pagers for my PR team, for my ad, for my brands, and viral LinkedIn posts. The time saved is unreal. So whether you're a trend scout, consultant, marketer, or a solopreneur, Gamma is the all-in-one content creation tool that helps you go from idea to impact fast. In a world where speed and clarity matter, Gamma gives you the edge. Try it yourself at gamma.app and see how easy it is to make your insights stand out. The next one, AI content strategy. So if you look at content creators like Gary Vee or Alex Hermosi, they claim they create 300 to 500 content pieces a week. And of course, they're not just sitting down like, hey team, let's record 500 videos today so you have something to post. No, they make maybe two or three videos and then their team takes that content and adapts it to every platform. And I'm hearing it from a lot of creators and brands, but like if we're everywhere, the quality of content falls, but no, it doesn't fall if you use the right strategies because you take your unique ideas and you adapt them for different social media platforms. Because yes, I did this amazing podcast with Samir Vasavada who talked to me for 40 minutes and he told me about his hiring strategy, but I'm not gonna just post that on LinkedIn. That's YouTube content, that's audio content. On LinkedIn, I'm just gonna make a quick post. This is how they went from 140 employees to I remember like 40 employees in less than a year and they're making 3x more dollars. I'm coming up with numbers, I don't remember them, but this is what I'm gonna do for LinkedIn. And that type of content is gonna perform really well on LinkedIn. It's not gonna look as if Marina is tired writing post number 500 a week. It's gonna look very natural for that platform. And this is exactly what AI content strategy is. It's telling Marina to focus on just two or three ideas a week and the team and AI is gonna take this content and replicate. And I remember when I first encountered this media company kind of um, strategy. Of course, when I was researching Gary Vee back in 2018, I thought, of course, he has this huge company, he, he can afford it. Now with AI, you don't have to be a huge company. You can actually be a one person team because there are so many AI tools to do that. And again, I mentioned some of them, Poppy, EasyGen, Gamma for all the visuals and visual social media posts. There are so many AI tools that can be your social media manager. If you're running a business, you have so many ideas for your posts in your customer reviews and sales data, which you can feed to AI. And then it will write catchy SEO friendly product descriptions, but also like, what is it called? We're no longer targeting SEO with our text. We're actually targeting AIs. So it has to be AI friendly. It checks which hashtags and post times are trending, creates Instagram, TikTok posts or scripts for you that actually get noticed. 
Even email campaigns became so easy with AI. Again, you just need one idea a week and then you just create all of that content. But AI segments your customers and sends out personalized offers that people actually open. And of course, then we hear stories of small businesses blowing up because of their content strategy. And of course, product comes first. But when a founder is too focused on the product, who's gonna focus on the marketing part? You, using AI. Consultants charge $100 to $200 an hour for this, and even beginners can start helping businesses for, I'd say, $25 to $50 an hour. AI localization. Let's talk about languages. Uh, as someone who has multiple channels in different languages, first of all, this amazing example where I did interview with Reid Hoffman in Russian, oh, sorry, in English, and we dubbed it into Russian, and it got over 200,000 views in Russian, and we also were, I think we're, we were able to uh, sell a, an ad slot in that video. And Charlie Chang told me, Charlie Chang is this affiliate uh, genius, so he makes videos that don't get too many views. The videos that generate the most amount of money for him, they're not like the most popular ones, but he sells other companies' products by using affiliate links. And he told me that they translate their best performing videos into German, Spanish, I think they re-record them, but you could just translate them using AI for other creators. And uh, AI doesn't just translate, it actually localizes. So it makes it more personal. It helps you with like even mouth moves and uh, it helps with everything, language, visuals, even local trends and laws. That's why Airbnb boosted bookings in Japan after switching to minimalist wabi-sabi designs. And this is something AI can help you with as well. And Netflix cut promo costs in Asia with AI made local trailers. Businesses pay $200 to $500 per project or more to audit sites for cultural missteps. Here's the kicker. 92% of consumers drop brands after just one cultural fail. With AI, you become the bridge between global businesses or creators who want to go global and real people. So there is business in localizing the website, localizing the offers, localizing content, localizing ads. AI personalization. Here's how brands use AI to boost sales on autopilot. KFC's AI noticed Michael from Texas who always orders spicy wings on Fridays. So now he gets a coupon right before dinner time, leading to a reorder rate increase. Blue Bottle Coffee's AI emails you as soon as your beans are running low, which bumped repeat purchases by 37%. How does it work? Just connect your analytics and CRM, let AI track hundreds of customer habits, and use ChatGPT to whip up personalized emails in minutes. That's real-time marketing powered by AI. As a beginner, if you want to start working in that area, I would recommend studying Gemini for Google Sheets. That really does magic. Like we're using Gemini to analyze our customers, what they complain about, what they really like, so we can create better products and uh, better target them with our future offers. What took our team days, like to go through every review, now takes a couple minutes because Gemini just summarizes everything in a spreadsheet. And of course there are other tools, but this is something that a lot of companies are gonna need and are already in need of and they're looking for specialists like you. Number six, AI content creation. So I know we talked a lot about repurposing, etc. but what if there is nothing to repurpose? Like, how do you create content? The new video generation tools are just mind blowing. Have you seen VO3 that generates videos plus voice? Uh, and it can create dialogues and everything. And with something we talked about already in this video, you can generate the scripts and then feed them to tools like NVIDIA AI, VO3, uh, Sora, and generate those beautiful videos for different brands. And you say, but anyone can do it. No, there's really work involved. And you know, guys, when I'm saying a lot of things about AI tools and when I'm mentioning AI tools, that doesn't mean you just take that AI tool and that's it. You need to learn how to use it. When our team employs an AI tool, we actually produce a manual on how to use it correctly. Because if you just give it one prompt, it's not going to work. Same with videos. You try to create an ad, but how do you get a consistent character? How do you get that person that you chosen or a mascot to reappear in the same way in every single video that you create for a brand? That's something you have to figure out, something that's figureoutable, something you can do 
but it takes time, it takes work. It's not just about like, oh, let's make a video of a couple enjoying coffee in the park. No, it has to be cool. Have you seen those videos where uh, they're like using VO3 to recreate modern creators? Uh, like how they're like standing in front of the fire and like, oh, this is crazy. What is happening? Or how they're using VO3 to create uh, AI characters who actually say things like, oh, I'm not really AI. How could I be AI? I'm so real. Learn how to create those videos. Learn how to create videos where an object is really an object, but then it, I don't know, disappears or blends into something else. That's something that only Hollywood could do a couple years ago, it's, and now it's available to everyone. When you master the art of making videos, you can offer something like TikTok ads in 24 hours for $50 because clients care about results, not how you made them. And if you do that for 50 bucks, then why not? And skill number seven, something I promised. Critical thinking and entrepreneurial mindset. You need to be able first to understand that AI still makes a lot of mistakes, sometimes big ones. Like we, we double check everything AI does because sometimes it just hallucinates. It still hallucinates. And second thing, you the entrepreneur, you come up with ideas. You have to spot that problem like, oh yeah, I see a lot of companies needing this. Why don't I build? I feel like in 2025, we're in this time where anyone can be an entrepreneur and uh, you can build a tool in 24 hours. Lovable, Replit, like all the tools. From idea to deploying the idea, 24 hours, done. It's, it's there, it's on the market. And this is what I'm teaching my kids. I am teaching them to come up with ideas and bringing them to life. Because a lot of people can dream, not a lot of people can deliver. But now with AI, it's a lot easier to deliver as well. So why not take advantage of 2025? We don't know what's going to happen in 2026, I know. But at least we can start making something now and stay positive about this change. Thank you so much for watching this video. And uh, oh my God, I wonder what I would think when I look at this video from 2027. Oh my God, it's crazy. The base of innovation is just mind blowing. But anyways, let's stay positive and uh, excited about the future. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you very soon on this channel. Bye.